The brother before me tonight and the brother before Adam last night, he done preached a whole while. He preached from Genesis to Revelation. Now he said Revelation was boom, you know, but he got it in there. He got it in there. So I think we just need to close and go eat because I mean he covered everything. All right? Y'all all for that? Well, that's my first closing. I got two more to go. So let's get open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm not going to keep you very long. I'm going to try to maybe deliver half of this message. But it goes along with the theme of Brother Barrett and what Brother Allen was bringing the other day. Now, we're in the New Testament. And I want to show you some things. I want to read start verse 24 of chapter 9. Now, chapter 9 lays out the rights that the Christian has in relation to pagan worship. And so Paul's going to describe some, describe some things here starting in verse 24. So let's follow along. Chapter 9, 1 Corinthians, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. Now, let me stop right there. I'm going to be dealing with a race tonight, a race that we have to run. Okay? You don't have to run it. You can walk it. You can sit down. But I need to know two things before I go into this race in this scripture tonight. Number one, does Usain Bolt run tonight? Good. Number two, where's all those folks that were sitting up front with us when Usain run the other night? We fixed to talk. Hey, and I told them today, don't you get mad at me. I knew there was a USA guy in there. I was pulling for Bolt. That's the safe thing to say around here. But I was because I wanted to see history made. And I, you know, because there's nobody, my lifespan is very short now. So I was glad he won. But everybody was down here shouting. But you know, tonight we're going to talk about a race that you and I got to run. And we better get excited about it. And I want to look at that. So Paul said, Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but you same boat receiveth the prize. That's what happened, right? A bunch of them run. So run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore, Paul says, I therefore, so run, not as uncertainty, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep my, keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Now folks, this is Apostle Paul speaking of being a castaway. Now if we're going to look at him being a castaway, there's one or two things you got to, to determine in your mind what you believe. If Apostle Paul, in the word uh, castaway there, it means disapproved. When he stands before Christ, he will be disapproved. He says he, at this point in his life, Paul is concerned about being disapproved at the judgment seat. Now, thank the Lord when he gets over in Timothy, he writes, I finished the course. I fought the fight. Praise the Lord for that. I, I believe in you. He said, I've laid up for me a crown of righteousness to give me in that day. And so praise the Lord in you. But when he wrote 1 Corinthians, he says, hey, unless at that time I be disapproved. Here's the way I look at it. If Paul's worried about being disapproved, we better worry. We better worry and find out what God wants from, from us. Okay? 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us what? Study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know what the problem is today? Most people, and I don't know about Barbados, but Brother Allen will back me on this, Brother Ken, in the United States of America, it has become almost a religion to read your Bible through every year. Now, there's nothing wrong with reading your Bible through every year. 
but I have a problem trying to read my Bible through every year because I get stuck. I'll find something, I go to research it, and I've yet to get out of Genesis. I mean, it is a beautiful book, and we might go there in the morning or something. But I don't have any problem reading your Bible through, but the Bible, he didn't say, read your Bible to be approved, did he? What did he say? Study. So if Paul, who wrote Corinthians, worried about it, who wrote the letter to Timothy, you and I better take heed and listen. Okay? So, now I believe the ninth and tenth chapter, I believe this Bible's inspired. I believe every word of it, and I tell my people this. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Is that right? No. God said it, that settles it, whether I believe it or not. All right? <laughs> so that's the way it goes. God said it, that settles it. So I, I don't believe the chapter divisions are inspired. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't believe they should have ever stopped and went to 10 right here because he says, moreover, okay, or also. Now this is where I want to go, but what I want you to first to see tonight before we go any further, this is Paul writing and he says, I'm worried. I'm concerned. So I keep my body under subjection. Unless when I get there, I'm found unworthy, disapproved. So moreover, brethren, chapter 10, verse 1. I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now notice he's what he's saying. He says, brethren. He's talking to the brethren. He's looking at how Israel, the people of God, Israel, the people of God, the ones that back in Exodus 4, God told Moses, said, you tell Pharaoh, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Let them go. That's Exodus 4, I think 22 and 23, right in there. Israel is my son. Now, if you know anything about the Jewish Religion, when does a Jewish boy, Jewish male, become a son? Now, where I'm from, I've got three sons. We've got three male boys, <laughs> ages 40, 36, and 26. But when does a Jew... Right, the day they were born, they said, what would you have? I'd say, I had a boy. I even told the doctor, I said, if you don't come out and tell me I got a boy, this was before you could know. If you come out and tell me I got a girl, you going back in there and see what you can do to change it. I want a boy. And I ended up doing that. Hey, Shannon, I can't believe that. You're crazy. But anyway, I am. My name's Crazy Tracy, where I come from, okay? But... I've got three of them. Now, the day they were born, I tell people, man, I got a son. I got another son. But now, listen, in the Jewish culture, a male child does not become a son until the father says he is ready and mature enough to take over the family's affairs. Now, you can check me out on this. Some of you looking at me like I'm crazy. But that's what we call the bar mitzvah that they have when a male child becomes a son. The father says he is now worthy to be called my son. Galatians talks about up until that time he's with who? Tutors and instructors and different things and he becomes a son. That's what I want to be pronounced. I want to be pronounced as God's son. You say, well, what about John 1, 12? Well, look it up. It's as many as received him to them, he gave he the power to become King James, says the sons of God. But if you look it up, it says become the child of God. So we're looking to become sons of God. And even more than that, I want firstborn status. Do you know the difference in a son 
and a firstborn. A firstborn got a double inheritance. Okay? So that's what we are strive, striving for. But here he says, more of a brother in Israel. I don't want you to be ignorant that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What is he saying? They were delivered out of the hand of the enemies by the blood of the sacrificial lamb. Now I talked to you, uh, preacher of men this morning about types. That's where I'm going to be going tonight and probably next time I preach in types. If I want to read one verse to you, and then I'm going to back up again. Look at verse 6. He says, Now these things were our examples. Okay? These things were our examples. Two posts. Type. Okay? To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So, Let's look now, how is Israel a type today of what I call the one new man in Christ? That's Christians, that's saved people, when I call it the one new man in Christ. They were ransomed by grace. They had been in captivity some 430 years. They got to calling out to God. God sends a deliverer named Moses, who is a type of Christ. I won't get into that tonight. But he sends a deliverer. He goes to Pharaoh. You know the story. Pharaoh wouldn't let him go. There's ten plagues come, and after the tenth plague of the firstborn, the firstborn son being uh, killed as the death angel passed over, what did they have to do to keep the their son alive? They got a lamb without spot or blemish. I think you spoke of it the other day. Let me turn that real quick. I'll read it to you. You don't have to. It's in Exodus 12, and I want to show you something here. In verse, in Exodus 12, 3, it says, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month, they shall take every man a lamb. Okay? A lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. So they went out in the many, many lambs out there. They looked for that one lamb. Everyone took. A lamb, if you go down to verse 4, and if the household be too little for the lamb, now they have a, a lamb, but now he's what? He's their sacrifice. He is now the lamb. Okay? Now you go down a little further, and it gets even better if you want a message, a three-point outline. Verse 5 says, your lamb. He can be a lamb. He can be the lamb, but he better be your lamb. He's your sacrifice. He's the one that died and shed his blood for you. But anyway, the children of that being a type, they put it all over the lentils of the doorpost. The death angel passed over. He saw the blood. He what? Passed over. They went out. They went out with all most of the riches of Egypt. They were under the cloud. Numbers 14, 14. They were under the cloud, which pictures the, pictures the Lord's presence. And I want you to notice something. All were led out. Notice what he says in verse 1 of chapter 10. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. They didn't leave one behind. He took them all out of Egypt. And so Pharaoh's claims to them had been cut off. They thought. But what happened? They got between a rock in a hard place. I don't know if you understand that. Think about when we get into a tough situation, they'll say, you between a rock and a hard place. Well, they had in front of them the Red Sea. What was behind them? Mountains. What was coming up behind them? Pharaoh's army. God delivers again. And I like, I'd like to look at that once again in Exodus 12. Now, you know, Brother Carl has built me up as a cowboy. Let's put it this way. In my life, I was a wannabe cowboy. I played cowboy. And if I could get on a horse today, I'd play cowboy some more. But, and I do like to hunt and fish, but that does not, you know, that does not make a man because 
The other, you know, at home, in order to carry a gun, we have to have a gun permit. And I took it and passed it. And my wife, she carries a gun, a nine millimeter. So if you come to the States, don't mess with her. She's very good with it. She beat me in the shooting. But she got the gun and she, she qualified for the permit with a 22 Magnum I have. Now she's a little scared. Now I'm a little scared. There was some things going on in the neighborhood. And she had recall literally scored three points higher than me in the class, the shooting class. We was in bed one night and I said, you feel safer if I lay this 22 Magnum where you can get your hands on it? This was before Christmas and I bought her the nine. And she said, yes, put that up there. So we was in bed a couple nights later, bang! Something in the, something hit somewhere. I don't know what it was. I heard it. She heard it. I just rolled over, you know, if they come, and it wasn't my door being kicked in. So if they come in the house, I still got time to take care of them. And she jumps up in the bed and she looks, she said, did you hear that? I said, yes. She said, you go and check it out. About four in the morning. I said, no. I said, you shot better than me. You get the gun go check it out. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is, I'm not that strong a man. I'm sending my wife out, you know, to get the intruder. Because she, you know, she outshot me. But, you know, when I look at this passage here and what they were doing, if I saw a Red Sea in front of me, Pharaoh's army coming up behind me. You'd see me on my knees, cowboy and all, going, oh, Lord, help me. I would be doing the same thing those Israelites were. I'd probably be behind my wife instead of in front of her. You know, let her protect me. And, you know, so I'm the preacher. You can't live without the preacher. You might can make it without the preacher. You know, that, that would be my, that would be my excuse. So, but, you know, but here they were. They were caught in this thing. And, and, I, and I just turned away from it. Let me get back real quick. But here's what I want you to see. This chapter, I can't find it. I got my old Bible out tonight because of some of the questions that were being asked where I could turn to it. It's about to fall apart like Brother Allen. But here it is. And Moses said to the people, Fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today. You shall see them again no more forever. Now that. That would make him shout. The Lord shall fight for you. And ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses. Wherefore criest thou unto me. Moses. I'm just like Moses. I've still been crying. Lord, you got to tell me how I'm going to do this. Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. And that's what you and I need to do. They could have stopped at the Red Sea, surrendered, and went back into slavery, back into the world. But God said, Moses, I'm going to fight for you. Go forward. And let me tell you something that I've learned through this, this walk, through these truths that we're bringing out, trying to say this. When you get into trial, when you get into tribulation, tribulation, you remember one thing. God will fight your battle for you. You just keep marching forward. You're not going to agree. You're not going to dot every I and cross every T with everybody. But keep marching forward. There is a danger in sitting still when God is saying march. If they had a set still, the Red Sea would have never parted. But they did what they supposed to do. And I'm going to tell you something. They, everybody says, well, they walked. And I think the Bible says they walked. That would have been one cowboy that wasn't walking. I'd have been a running and dragging my wife behind me because I want to get to the other side. Can you imagine walking through a wall of water? you got to have some faith. So anyway, they were let out. That's the part, number one, that I want you to see. This is a type. If you don't understand what types are. The blood of the Lamb. What happened over in the New Testament? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Then they go through the Red Sea. You know what that's a type of? Baptism. 
They go, they went through the Red Sea. Hey, you talking about being immersed? Big walls of water on both sides of you immersed. They went through the Red Sea. So Pharaoh's claims were cut off by the Red Sea. So this is an illustration of our redemption by the blood and through the waters of baptism. They were, the Bible says they were immersed into Moses. We are immersed into Christ. And notice what's over them. A cloud of divine presence by day, what by night? Fire. Now, when they got into the wilderness, they got into the wilderness they had some bread. It wasn't of nature, but it was of heaven. You know what it was called? Manna. God fed them. Do you know what the word manna means? What is it, manna? What does it mean? That's manna. What is it? <laughs> That's exactly right. That's what it means. They were walking out looking. That was these, I call them cinnamon rolls. Running around looking on the ground. What is this? What is it? What is it? What is it? Somebody undoubtedly picked one up. Don't know what it is, but it's good. And so they had manna. God provided manna with a daily supply. Where to get the water? From a rock. That's the last place I'd look for water. But that rock was who? Christ. Now, but I want you to notice something here that's important. The passage through the Red Sea that typifies baptism, salvation before that, baptism, the passage through the Red Sea come before the manna, the daily bread, and the water from the rock. I also want you to notice this. The Red Sea typifies baptism one time. And forever. But the bread and the water were constantly repeated. Every day but the, but the Sabbath, they'd go out on the ground. What was on the ground? What is it? That was water. Daily supply. What is he telling us there? Hey, I'm saved. Praise the Lord. I've been baptized. Praise the Lord. I use this all the time up home. And, uh, Dominique here, I'll tell that story later. You can be, you can, there's a lot up where we're from believe in water baptism, salvation, water regeneration. And I'll tell them this. You can be baptized in every pond in Tennessee to every bullfrog knows your name. But it ain't going to do you no good. Until you, first of all, you apply the blood. Then you apply the baptism. That's over. But what must you do daily? If you're not going to eat for a week, you know what you're going to be? So we're well, going to be hungry. Yeah, that's right. You're going to be weak. You don't eat for a week. Going to look like you. You can tell I ain't fasted lately. <laughs> Brother Carl is like he fasting every day. But he supplied it. And what's that telling you? We need the bread. We got to have the bread. You must eat. If you're going to grow, you've got to eat. You've got to have water. I won't turn to those passages, but remember that. You've got to eat. You've got to have bread. If you're going to grow, you've got to have it. So here we go. Israel was led as one family by God's appointed leader and were all fed alike. Now get this. It's important. They were led by one, Moses, God's appointed leader, and every one of them had the same access to the manna and the water. Right? So undoubtedly, when they got to the promised land, everyone made it. Correct? Did every one of them go into the promised land? Now let me say this. For those of you that might be ready to go, and I'm going to be through here in a minute, that's the second close. I might do I might do four tonight, I feel good. Forgot what I'm going to say. 
Where was I at? You sleeping too, huh? Huh? Oh, yes. They were all fed alike. They all had access to the same bread. They all had access to the same rock, water. And let me stop and say this. A well in Scripture, especially in Genesis, let me tell you, let, let me get this is good. You ready? If you understand typology and you study typology, especially in the book of Genesis, do you know where every bride was taken from, where they was found? Say that out loud. The well. And a well. You know what a well typifies? The Word of God. Every one of them was drawing from the well. What does that tell you? If you want to get to that upper echelon of hearing well done and good and faithful servant, you better be drawing from the well, which is the Word of God. And it's full. Every one of them. Go through and study and look at it. There's a book out called The Bride in Genesis. Go look at it. Go read it. Every one of them. Moses' wife. Uh, uh, Rebecca for Isaac all of them were found where? at the well drawing able to draw from the well but every one of these I gotta get I can't, uh, see what happened today is I went back to your place and I studied types I got this Bible here this is the Bible I started 12 years ago understanding the kingdom this is the third cover that's been on it. And I put it up because it's falling apart again. But I pulled out Old Faithful today. And went to looking at all the notes and types and stuff. Because I want you to understand types. Because that's one thing that drove some things home for me. And so we have that in the whale. But here, every one of them. Got, you know, look at verse, look at verse two, chapter 10. All were baptized. Verse three, all did eat. Verse four, all did drink. They all had the same thing. You're sitting here tonight, you got a Bible, you got the same thing that everybody else in here that's got a Bible that you're able to eat and drink from. But notice verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. That would be okay if it's that verse stopped right there. But it doesn't. I told you I got three sons. There's been times that they've come in or they've done things that Ellen and I were not well pleased with. And we had to discipline them. Okay? Now look what God he said here. So many of them, God was not well pleased for they were what? Overthrown, look the word up, destroyed in the wilderness. As the brother here pointed out, of all those, what, how many was it, brother? They say about three and a half million left, right? About three and a half million headed for the promised land. Only two over the age of 20 went in. Now, I'll get more of that tomorrow night. But only two went in. I haven't figured that up. If somebody's good in math, figure up two, what the percentage is of two over three and a half million. I think it's kind of low, don't you? So what I'm trying to say now, you say, well, preacher, why are we going to try? Come back. Thursday night and I'll tell you from verse 13 but here's the thing if it was that lower percentage that went in don't you think you and I being warned here in 1 Corinthians 10 need to take diligently what not necessarily what I say a brother Adam, a brother Carl or any of these preaching men but you better take diligence to study that word that God has given us. The brother brought it out so plain tonight. And here's what I want to tell you just backing him up. Jesus Christ is the living word. 
And Jesus Christ is the written word. You cannot separate the two. They're both one and the same. He's told us all he wants us to know. So, Paul here goes back to verse 24 that we read in 1 Corinthians. Know ye not that they which run the race run all? But one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. From all of Israel, all of Israel received the great same privileges. They had all the matter, the water they needed. They were set at the same starting point. Did all win the goal? Or were there castaways that were disapproved by God? God was not well pleased with Israel. The the privilege did not place them under grace and to put away their responsibility and their call to obedience. I don't know about here, but everywhere we go in the United States of America, everybody there is preaching salvation by grace. You should preach salvation by grace, but that's not the end. There must be obedience and faithfulness if you're going to hear the words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. God showed his disapproval with them for they never received the prize of their calling. What was Israel's calling? You can turn down, but I'm going to read it from my paper, Exodus 3.8. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Persites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, a bunch of ice. Hey, what was their calling? I'm going to give you a land that's flowing with milk and honey. He alluded to it tonight. Hebrews 3 and 4. What does he say? There's yet a day of rest, right? There's yet a day of rest coming. The kingdom, the millennial kingdom is coming. Let us fear Unless we don't enter into that rest. All that backs up and comes back to Exodus 12 in type. Verse 5 says God was not well pleased. Israel was God's people. Listen to me and I'm closing. This is the third one and I'm through. Might be a long one but I'm through. Israel was God's people. Saved by the blood, just as you and I are. Baptized in the Red Sea. They numbered in the millions. And out of all those, only two entered. When the judgment came. Who are the two major ones that did not get to go in? Moses and Aaron. Moses being the leader, Aaron being the high priest. They did not get to go in. That's a different message for a different day. But I want to tell you something. What does that tell us? The principal preachers even took effect on the leaders. That same principle. Now if God shows you something in scripture and you see it, let me tell you this, you preach it. You got a congregation. If I were to come to your church, I would not dare step out of the line on what you teach. And I don't want people coming to my church, my pulpit, stepping out of line what I teach. But let me tell you this. If God shows me something or God shows you something, you better grab it and take it to them and don't worry about how it affects them. Because you will be held for the truth. It's like I told you today. Let's take serious what comes over this pulpit. And I'm sure you will. I'm just saying that as a guy that's been pastoring now some 20 years. It's a serious undertaking. I told two guys today about my pastor. and And I'll tell you this in just a little bit. My pastor, Eddie Brown. He was the first one I ever heard Brother Carl preach a message before I ever come to Chattanooga and was introduced to these things. But he preached a message. 
And the title of the message was Butt Naked Christians at the Judgment Seat. You know what he's talking about? Revelation 19, 7 and 8. The robe is the righteous acts of the saints. He said there are going to be many a saint come out of this, this church age that are not going to have a robe and they're going to stand before Jesus. And I don't know if y'all know what butt naked is, but where I come from, that means you ain't got nothing on. I mean, you left to bear it all. That was the title of his message. That was my pastor. And let me tell you something, preacher. I'm going to go ahead and say this. When I went to him 20-something years ago as a man in his 30s, and I said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. Went to his office and sat down. He said, what you want? I said, I believe God's calling me to preach. Ah, God don't call folks like you. Get out of here. That's what he told me. I got up and left. I was a little mad, a little disappointed. I got, what's wrong with me? Why wouldn't God use me? You know, and I started to tell him, well, listen, that's sometimes when you're up there teaching, I could finish it. You ain't said enough. But I didn't. Three months, four months went by, and I called him in his office again. I said, I know what you said, but I still feel like God's calling me to preach. And he said, sit down. I've been knowing it for a year. And I said, well, you told me three months ago. He said, hey, I want to be sure you were God called and not preacher called. Because when times get rough, and you believe me, they will, I want you to know God put you there. And God will stand with you. Not some man. And when you know you're God called. And God reveals something to you. Hey, I got people in my church here. I had a church full. Started bringing these truths out. And you know what happened? You ever took baby away from a candy? A baby away from a candy. You ever took candy away from a baby? What happened? Cry. When you go to taking those things away just because you're saved. I had a woman with a fingernail that long. Put it right down on my nose. And she said, don't you dare tell me I ain't getting everything Dan and Sharon Daughter are getting. Dan and Sharon Daughter were missionaries out of our church. And I said, you take that fingernail off, it's cutting my nose. Well, I don't think you are. <laughs> But that's the way people think. And when you bring these truths, you better know you're standing with God. And listen, just because you get it out of a book, or just because you hear one of us say something, dig it. Be sure of it yourself before you ever let it out. Because you got to back it up. Tell you a funny story and I'm through. I'm talking to these guys now. The rest of you can go to sleep. I love young preacher men. Thank God for each and every one of you. But I went to a conference, a kingdom conference in Dallas, Texas. First one that I ever went to, I was preaching in it. Young man went with me from a church, was a preacher. He's now in New Mexico preaching. That's all I'll say. I won't give you his name, but his initials is Jason Perry. He's no kin to you, I don't think. But he went. And he was asked to speak, and he took a message literally from Chitwood's book about the bride. I mean, when he went to preaching it, I knew it was word for word Chitwood. Then they had a question and answer session, and it was about the bride, about if you go, if a principle through the Bible, principle of first mention that you learn in hermeneutics, Principle of first mention will hold all the way through scripture that in order to rule, you must have a bride. And he went through there and they was asked a question. And you know what he said? This was going out of worldwide, worldwide radio. He looked at that man that asked that question and I could tell in his face he was stumped. And he said, let me tell you something. That question you ask is so simple. I'm going to give it to my pastor and let him answer it. <laughs> and so he, so he handed me the mic. Luckily, I had read all of Chitwood's book. I was able to, to do somewhat of an answer. But what I'm standing here tonight, 
I'm going to finish this tomorrow night, but go ahead and read. I'm going down through verse 13 in typology. You remember something. What this brother, Brother Barrett, that right, preached tonight? Is it Barrett? The, what he went over last night, and that's truth. That's truth. I wish I had his eloquence and sophistication. But God put me in the wrong part of the country to have it. But what he said is truth. And also hidden in that truth, and a lot of that, brother, is a type. And if you can find that type, and that type runs out, nail it down. You can now be dogmatic. And I'll show you some of that in the morning. Oh, I wish I knew the Old Testament. I can read it a thousand times. won't know it like you know. Now, I do know there are 39 books in there. <laughs> Just cutting up with you, brother. Just bringing you down a little bit after building you up. That's all. But here's what I want to say to every one of you. And I'll finish this. I said Thursday night. If Paul was worried about being a castaway. If two out of three and a half million made it, you and I better get serious about this book and what he's teaching us. The world has taken it, the devil has taken it and made it all about one thing. Because the seats, the crowns, the seats that you and I are are searching for, or striving for. That's what it means. It says strive for. Is some of the seats that Satan and his people hold right now. He don't want to give them up. And he'll attack you in every way. Get serious. Study to show thyself approved. And then we may be able to say, and I'll close with this again. I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Why do you get a crown? Why do they give you a crown? It's a sign of authority. A sign of rule. And you're not going to cast it back at Jesus' feet. He's going to give it to you and give you a position. If you are found approved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But that's just the beginning. You've now entered the race. How many of you know who Usain Bolt is? Can I see your hand? I want to see your hand. Let me see. You know who Usain Bolt is? He won the most world known. I know you do back there. I've been looking for you. <laughs> you both be up here. Do you not think in order to run as fast as that man can run that he has not put his body under subjection? You think he goes out and eat a pepperoni pizza every night? I heard the girls, U.S. Olympic team, said they were going to celebrate. They were going to get a pepperoni pizza. I have pepperoni pizza regular. Why do they not have it? Keeping their body under subjection. Why? For a corruptible gold medal. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. We don't know why God has laid up for us. You remember what I showed you this morning? You can do this or this or forsake this or forsake this or forsake this. What did the next verse say? And he'll give you a hundredfold and, and, and. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he'll add all of that in verse 29 or wherever I was at this morning and give it to you because you've done one of those. One of those. I was asked today, well, preacher, why is there weeping and gnashing of teeth? Can I tell you what I think? And I'm done forth clothing. Let me tell you what I think. Why is there weeping and gnashing of teeth in certain scriptures? Then if it's dealing with Christians, when we see what we forfeited, when we see what we forfeited because we wanted to live our way and not God's way, we will weep and gnash our teeth in sorrow. Because I have not seen, nor ear has heard, what God has in store for those that are found faithful. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, may it be taken tonight as you would have it in each heart. 
May the Holy Spirit have his way in each heart here tonight. Thank you for these dear people. Thank you for their love of the Lord and the Word of God. Lord, give them a special blessing tonight. We'll thank you. We'll praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Carl.